you so much. Good evening to you. And welcome to Have I Got News for You. <laughs> I'm William Shatner. And in the news this week, as uh, Didier Dogba leaves London in his private jet, there's evidence that Roman Abramovich really doesn't want him to go. <laughs> As an Afghan army recruit reports back to base, there are suspicions that he may have spent too long patrolling the poppy fields. <laughs> At the G8 banquet for world leaders, Nick Clegg is given a vital role. <laughs> On Ian's team tonight is a writer and broadcaster who says he runs for at least an hour every day, and it's not a health thing. It's just a lot of people he's been nasty about want to punch him in the face. <laughs> Please welcome Charlie Brooker. And, and with Paul tonight is a writer and broadcaster who supports Chelsea, so expect him to perform badly throughout the evening, but somehow end up on the winning side. <laughs> oh, Andy yeah. Hamilton. Oh. And we start with the bigger stories of the week. Ian and Charlie, take a look at this. It's the G8 Summit. This is uh, Cameron sunning his moobs. <laughs> French Prime Minister. He just <laughs> hasn't got the hang of it, does he? Oh, that's a man using a computer to monitor the three remaining coins in the economy. <laughs> <laughs> this is the uh, G8 summit and uh, Greece's attempts to cling on to the euro. <laughs> Can I just say what a joy and what a surreal experience <laughs> yeah. it is having you on the show? <laughs> yeah. May I say... This is an out-of-body experience for me, too. Uh, how did the... Uh, how did the head of the International Institute of Finance describe the state of Europe? It's a catastrophe. It's a Eurozone meltdown, which sounds like a gay nightclub. Um, and, and they're very worried about Greece. I know that much. I saw a headline that said, Markets slide on Greece. <laughs> Fair. Yeah. Everything slides on Greece. <laughs> Well, it was uh, somewhere between catastrophe and Armageddon. <laughs> Your Sunday Times newspaper painted the worst-case scenario. It's not ours. <laughs> <laughs> Belongs to Mr Murdoch. He's yours. He's well, an American. Uh, <laughs> uh, this uh, Sunday Times newspaper <laughs> painted the worst-case scenario in the event of the Greeks crashing out of the Euro. Can you describe it to me? Well, there's a run on the banks in Greece, then we're exposed to that, then all the other countries fail. Then giant rats roam the streets <laughs> throughout the whole of Europe. We're invaded by aliens. There's only one man to call on. <laughs> well, 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 they said unemployment would soar, inflation would soar, a deep recession would emerge across the continent, public services would fail, house prices would collapse, civil unrest would spread. But on the other hand, it may never happen. <laughs> So, uh, don't worry, David Cameron's got it all under control. It's his ship now. Yes. Yeah. It's his ship, but not with a P. <laughs> <laughs> well, would you like to see the G8 leaders adopting a tough stance? Yes. Yes, 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 well, yes there they are. <laughs> There's ten of them. They can't even count. <laughs> <laughs> They did come to an agreement, though. They've agreed that they're going to do nothing. Didn't they agree to buy the man at the end a new jumper? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's just somebody's dad. He's wandered in. <laughs> what did the French president do wrong at the G8 summit, according to the Telegraph? According to the Telegraph? Well, he's French. <laughs> uh... Apparently, uh, Francois Hollande had arrived for dinner in formal attire, but was urged to lose the neckwear by Obama. And here they are at dinner with no ties. <laughs> so you can see how Camp David is relaxed and peaceful, and the others are enjoying themselves too. 
<laughs> I think Medvedev's choice of an icebreaker joke with Angela Merkel is... That looks like a Nazi salute. <laughs> <laughs> The left hand's coming up to do that. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember him? Do you remember him, love? Do you remember him? Do you remember him? Where was the real talking done? Going to the gym. Didn't uh, Obama and Cameron go to the gym together? On a treadmill. Oh. On a That's treadmill. Right, on a running machine. That's oh, right. Early in the morning. Nowhere. What a wonderful thing. <laughs> <laughs> it was on a running machine early in the morning after the dinner. Cameron and Obama went to the gym together, and according to the Observer, Obama arrived at Cameron's cabin in the forest at 7.15 a.m., and the two men walked alone to the gym, wearing their gym kits. They continued discussions on the running machines. And I kind of imagine that when Obama knocked on Cameron's cabin door, Cameron opened it in a short bathrobe, <laughs> his legs shiny with oil, and <laughs> the muscles of his thighs. <laughs> That's what you'd do, isn't it? <laughs> you can see why Obama's going for the gay marriage vote. <laughs> Or why he has an affinity towards Merkel. I don't... <laughs> it was... Uh... <laughs> I'm sorry, these things will be cut out as we go along. <laughs> How has this casual Bill, approach... you haven't seen this show. Have you? <laughs> That's true, and luckily, I may add. Um... <laughs> How has this casual approach damaged David Cameron? He is accused of uh, chillaxing too much. Chillaxing is a horrible word that it's a combination of chilling out and relaxing it's a, and, and anyone who combines words like that is just a funt <laughs> um, <laughs> that is not an american word <laughs> what is that word again it's a, a funt it's short for frightful count <laughs> um, you're right he was chillaxing and he cooks, he drinks wine, he watches DVDs with his wife, mm. plays snooker, has his own karaoke machine. Plays what? <laughs> snooker. 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 It's another blend word. Right. <laughs> Snoozing with a... With a bit of nook here. Yeah. <laughs> you, 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 so you, play with, you play with something long and balls. <laughs> you chalk the tip as well. <laughs> I don't see the problem with Cameron relaxing. They'd see this thing about he watches films on DVD. If he's watching a film on DVD, that's an hour and a half where he can't be doing any damage. <laughs> <laughs> Can you name some of his favourite pieces of relaxation technology? He's addicted to playing a video game called Fruit Ninja. There are video games he could play where he learns to run a country or over <laughs> oversee the infrastructure of a small city, but no, he's swiping at revolving fruit. And that, that serves no purpose. Britain has never and will never come under attack from revolving fruit. <laughs> so until he does, he's wasting his time. What other leisure activities were available at Camp David? Uh, watching the football. Yeah, yeah. And here they are, uh, watching the first shootout uh, that Obama watched live on TV. Of course, this is not the first. There was another shootout here. <laughs> and David Cameron had plenty of other things to worry about. What, what, what just emerged from the Levinson inquiry about the B-Sky B-Bid? This is a memo to Cameron from Jeremy Hunt. Mr Hunt was meant to be an impartial judge about whether Mr Murdoch, who owns your Sunday Times, um, <laughs> should be allowed to own anything else over here. And uh, Mr Hunt appeared to have already made up his mind, extraordinarily. That's outrageous. It is absolutely yes. outrageous. Well, what is being done about it? Uh, well, phasers set to stun, I think. The <laughs> uh... wife, Jeremy Hunt, got the haircut of an 11-year-old boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. He's got that duckling tuft <laughs> thing. Duckling tuft? Yeah. One you of know. the finest Shakespearean <laughs> actors this country ever produced. <laughs> He saw Duckling Tuft in his prime. He played Hamlet. He became <laughs> Sir Duckling Tuft. <laughs> <laughs> On the subject of the Champions League final, did anyone yes. notice uh, what the Chelsea captain John Terry did after the final whistle? Yes, he got into his kit, didn't he? And he, he, he celebrated with everyone else. He'd been suspended and he got into his kit. To be fair, he's used to getting changed very quickly. <laughs> Usually when there's uh, a, a key in the, in the front door. Um, and a honey, I'm home. <laughs> exactly. But he, no, he, he, so he, he, he took credit for something he hadn't done. Yes, and, and many people thought John Terry was intruding on somebody else's great moment, and some people on the internet did this. <laughs> you see. 
And this. <laughs> On the subject of faked images, did anybody see the Romanian TV presenter who tried to fake a sandstorm? <laughs> no, they do not. <laughs> the man was reporting on a sandstorm. Missed the sandstorm, and here's what happened. Chiar și la această oră, vântul suflă cu putere. Sunt momente în care este aproape imposibil să stai aici, pe malul mării, din cauza faptului că vântul suflă cu peste 60 de km la oră. Colegul meu, Florin Băgăț, vă arată cum e la mine. This is the G8 meeting. The, the leaders watched Chelsea win the Championship League on television, but there was outrage as the presentation of the trophy was spoiled by the unwelcome presence of an arrogant hate figure. <laughs> <laughs> In a recent speech, the former Prime Minister Gordon Brown declared, we need a larger firewall to prevent the crisis from spreading and the unpalatable truth is that the European countries can no longer rescue themselves without international support. That's what you need in a crisis. A mad Scotsman shouting, we cannot take it any longer. <laughs> Paul and Andy, take a look at this. All right, uh, this is the Olympic flame, is it oh. not? It's the beginning of the Olympic Games. The plane's been dipped in a special bowl of Olympic custard. Uh, that's... He's been to Ratners. He's but... been to Ratners. <laughs> this is the eternal flame that keeps going out. And um, I don't know if it's actually a light there or not. Uh, yeah, so these Olympics are coming to London. They've kept it secret, but now we can actually tell people. Oh, look, that's a very festive attack by Al-Qaeda. Yeah. <laughs> How did the Olympic flame arrive on Britain? It was British flown yeah. in that plane, which that Boris plane. described as a custard-coloured comet oh, right. streaking through the sky to bring Promethean fire from the Greek homeland yeah. to London. Yeah. You think I'm making it up? That's exactly what he said. <laughs> well, it, it goes out a lot, this flame. But yes, then they, it then does. they take it, it back it, to the it, mother flame. That's what they've got. Is the every, mother flame. every time it goes out, they, it's like they think we're all children. Oh, there's this sacred mother flame that we keep in the van. <laughs> and they go and they <laughs> it. Well, it flew from like Greece. Mother flame, isn't that the sun? They should erect a scaffold to the sun. Yeah. That would be impressive. A long piece of folded newspaper. Just get the light of it. <laughs> <laughs> So it arrived in the Golden Plain, as you said, yeah. and then onto Cornwall in a Sea King search and rescue mm -hmm. uh, helicopter. Let's let's see how the waiting crowd enjoyed the historic moment yeah. when that helicopter arrived. Its arrival was perfectly choreographed and hard to miss. <laughs> what what happened in Great Torrington <laughs> on day three? of the flame's 70-day journey. Well, the flame was put out and they had to resort to the mother flame that was being carried around in a Volkswagen van. But that had also gone out, so they had to go to the grandmother flame, which is kept in a sealed unit in Switzerland. <laughs> they do know that we, we have the secret of making fire in this country. I mean, we, we are capable of independently reigniting a torch that goes out. We have to import fire. <laughs> do we? We will soon. <laughs> Well, the flame went out, and game organizers blamed a malfunctioning burner. I had one myself once. Mm -hmm. they, they, they put too many jalapenos in my enchilada. <laughs> and I, I needed that helicopter wind to blow the flame out of it. <laughs> what is the relay a chance to show the world? That we're British. Yes, and we understand about fire. Yeah, we understand <laughs> the sacred flame of gorgeous goodness. It's a chance to uh, showcase some of Britain's most beautiful landmarks. According to the Daily Mirror, uh, 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 Didier uh, uh, Drogba... Do you have any idea what any of these words mean? Didier. <laughs> that, why doesn't he change his name? Yeah. <laughs> Carried the torch through Swindon uh, <laughs> Town Centre and which unsung community hero carried the torch through Taunton? Oh, I know oh, that. Summer, you, you know that mm, in some Yes. These, these torches were meant to be carried by local people to mm. show the community spirit. And um, in Taunton, it was Will I Am. <laughs> Does Is... he come from Taunton? No. <laughs> Taunton, Ohio. <laughs> I'd love it if he did come from Taunton. <laughs> telling the BBC how important an experience it was to him. Um, so, yeah, this is like... 
it's like it feels like a dream, right? This is something that you always saw on TV growing up, and uh, so to be here today in the UK, you know, with all the hard work that it took me to get to this level to be able to do that, it's following, pursuing my dreams, and uh, you know, and now I'm here in the UK running the torch. It's great. That, that's essentially a tribute to himself. <laughs> He said, you know, I grew up watching this as a kid. When I never remember ever seeing the torch being run. It wasn't on every day, was it? It wasn't like <laughs> Star Trek, which you watch. <laughs> you know, which I watched with my dinner in my lap every evening. But not in my, you know, I had a... You, you I should. Had a... <laughs> you weren't just thrown up. No, no. <laughs> Star Trek. Oh, oh, Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the relay runners been criticised for doing. As soon as you've walked your five metres as part of the, the the spectacle, you sell it on eBay. Well, they've come in for criticism for selling the torches on eBay. Mm -hmm. Making money out of the Olympics is is thought to be absolutely against the spirit. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, of the games, unless you're Visa or Samsung or Coca-Cola or. McDonald's or Lloyd's, uh, TSB, Adidas, BP, British Airways. Otherwise, it's a noble enterprise. <laughs> <laughs> you, you weren't paid for reading them all out, were you? I got a great deal of money for each one of those. <laughs> and in the next question, I mentioned some more. <laughs> what disappointments... Coca-Cola. <laughs> now you're cut in. <laughs> Millets. Can I just say millets. that? Let's see if I get some money from millets. Oh, okay. <laughs> millets. <laughs> Aim higher than millets, <laughs> sure. <laughs> what disappointments lay in store for torchbearer Sarah Milner Simons? Was she lost in fog? Lost someone in fog. got lost in the fog in Yeah. Oh, they yeah. did. They got lost in the fog even though they were, they were following someone with a flaming torch. torch. <laughs> well, she thought she sold her torch. For uh, 153,100 pounds. Unfortunately, this turned out to be a hoax. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Bell, who ran a leg of the journey in Cornwall, removed his eBay advertisement after messages of complaint were posted on the website. But he explained, we could genuinely use the money. We have a lovely baby boy, and my wife has just gone back to work after maternity leave. And also, the torch is nearly a meter long. Looks weird on the monitor. <laughs> <laughs> what caused confusion in Truro? Well, they're Cornish, aren't they? They'll always be confused in Truro. <laughs> I'm going to Truro on Sunday for no, a gig. Good so luck, Paul. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm dissociating myself from everything you say. You told me to say that before we came on, you know. You. <laughs> well... Crowds lining the streets in the Cornish town saw someone running down the high street and got ready to cheer as the torchbearer came past. According to the Daily Mail, however, it was a shoplifter <laughs> holding aloft <laughs> a bottle of rosé and being pursued by two assistants from the co-op. <laughs> And what were the organizers of a roadside hog roast advised <laughs> not to do? Don't roast a hog <laughs> on the side of the road. Well, uh, don't partially. light the fire. Because well, it's against health and safety. You're, you're, you're on the right track. Don't use the torch to roast the hog. <laughs> organizers. Oh, yes, because then, because if you use the torch to roast the hog, then the hog becomes the keeper of the eternal flame. Yeah. Then you have to march through the streets with the hog. <laughs> the sacred hog. The sacred hog that's a light. Yeah. And it just looks stupid. Yeah, it would look silly. <laughs> organizers of the giant hog roast told the Independent, we wanted to call it the Olympic. <laughs> but we were advised against it. It's, it's a bit close to the branding. <laughs> Meanwhile, according to the Daily Telegraph, thousands of people lining the streets have given the relay a carnival feel. For example, someone dressed as a cod and another as a chip <laughs> in Falmouth. <laughs> you Brits really know how to put on a show, right? You now, wait till you see our opening ceremony. Yeah. <laughs> There'll be hundreds of chips. chips. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 
seven cod. Morris in a giant <laughs> cod costume. <laughs> this is the Olympic torch, which is boldly going where no Olympic <laughs> torch has gone before. <laughs> Namely, yes, I agree with you. <laughs> Namely, Truro and Il Fracum. <laughs> Sounds deeply sexual. <laughs> kind of like a have cigar you, advert. Have you been to Il Fracum? You, I have. The place is laced oh, with prostitution. <laughs> <laughs> That's their new slogan now. That's yeah. right. <laughs> Come and get it laid in Il Fracum. Chelsea. Uh, hero. Here we go again. <laughs> George... Didier! Yes. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Carried the torch through Swindon. Although there was one awkward moment when John Terry stripped off and ran alongside him. <laughs> well, I am. Carried the torch through Carlton. <laughs> and thousands! <laughs> Lined the streets to witness this once in a lifetime sight. Oh my God, a black guy in the West Country? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that, that's not racist. Hey, I'm the guy who kissed Uhura. <laughs> you kissed green women, you kissed sort of I silver have, women. I discriminate not in color. <laughs> How did you know they had all the right anatomical. It, it doesn't the matter when you're kissing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is there any life form you wouldn't kiss? No, to give it life, I would kiss it anything. Yeah, yeah. Would yeah. You? Uh, the breath of life from me. Indeed. Do they? You bring people back to life. Yeah. <laughs> He's not doing bad with this Didn't show, you right? <laughs> <laughs> So now we're at round two. Yeah. Yes. And I'm going to give you musical clues <laughs> to these stories. And, and this is from my latest album, which I take it you've heard. <laughs> uh, okay, see? I appeal to the masses and not to the intelligentsia. <laughs> okay, here we go. And I think it's gonna be a long, long time. <laughs> Bill Touchdown brings me around again to find that I am not the man they thought I am <laughs> at all. Oh, no, 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 no. Anybody? Anybody got an idea? Yeah. I'm just overwhelmed by this. <laughs> Is everyone experiencing this? Is this in my head? There's a rocket, which has been a commercial rocket has been there launched. There you go. And on it are the remains of your co-star. Yes, it is. I read that in the Telegraph and I thought, how fitting and appropriate, you know, that Scotty's ashes go into space. And I turned the page and there was a report that the man who invented the TV remote control had died. And I thought, well, what they should do with his ashes is put them somewhere where you can never find them. <laughs> or with lots of urns that look very similar. <laughs> oh, actually, that urn. <laughs> This is the news that an exciting new era of commercial space travel has begun with the successful launch of the Dragon. Shall we have a look at how this thrilling new mm. dawn began? Yeah. Five, four, three, two, one, zero, and lift off. <laughs> lift off did not occur. A, a spokesman for SpaceX told reporters. All space flight is incredibly complicated. <laughs> well, well, it's not rocket science. <laughs> uh, what was the problem blamed on? Romulans. <laughs> <laughs> it was expecting the universe to rush towards us. <laughs> Apparently there were computer problems based on gremlins. The launch heralded in a new era of privately funded space travel. According to the Times, when a spokesman was asked how many gallons of water are sprayed on the launch pad to muffle the shock wave, he replied, oh, shitloads. <laughs> <laughs> this is a major breakthrough <laughs> in commercial uh, uh, space travel. Yeah. According to the Times, some of the parts of the rocket were bought on eBay. 
which explains why the jet thrust looks suspiciously like Olympic torches. <laughs> According to the Independent, the space capsule will carry 1,000 pounds of cargo for delivery to the International Space Station. And if none of the astronauts are in, then they will leave a card telling them to pick it up <laughs> between 8 and 11 from their nearest asteroid. <laughs> okay, another musical clue for you. <laughs> oh, Canada, I stand on guard for thee. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for oh. Of any Canada related news stories? Have there ever been any Canada related news stories? There was that old joke about Dean Martin, he saw a sign that said drink Canada dry, so he went there and did. <laughs> you probably remember that first time. Yes, around, yes, I remember where that was page three on the joke book. I <laughs> yes. Did anyone get eaten by bears? That's quite a common story in That's Canada. That's a common story in Canada. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, maple syrup. Yeah. <laughs> This is the news that a nude painting of uh, Prime Minister of Canada has been sold. Here it is. It's entitled Emperor Haute Couture. <laughs> yeah. I must say the painting looks well hung. Has that dog been fed? <laughs> I'd an... be nervous. Has... <laughs> the artist must be ecstatic about the sale. Anyone like to hazard a guess as to her facial expression? on hearing the news? A deep surprise, mixed with nostalgic longing for the 1950s. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else with, a, <laughs> with an equally uh, important answer? Let's <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, well, guess let, the facial expression. Yeah. Let, let, let's have a look. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's overjoyed. In uh, other art-related news, what can you see at a new art exhibition in London? There's a, an invisible pillar. The artwork is not there to make you think what might be. Why is it not here? In a sense, it is here. Mm. <laughs> I, can, I can see it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you're on special medication. <laughs> the Hayward Gallery is gathering together 50 invisible works by famous artists for display. Mm. Uh, shall we have a look at a couple? Uh -huh. Ah, yes, well, these are twin pieces here. Uh, the first one is a white Persian cat in snowstorm, <laughs> and um, the other one is uh, a Lib Dem manifest. <laughs> 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 This is the <laughs> naked painting of Canadian Premier Stephen Harper. According to BBC News, the artist has a collection of several nudes on her website. So have I, but that's none of your business. <laughs> the painting of the Prime Minister's naked penis can be seen on a wall in a public library hanging between two Pollocks. <laughs> <laughs> It's good, Jackson, it's an art joke. That's Jackson to you. <laughs> Meanwhile, in London... <laughs> in London, a new exhibition of invisible artworks will open to the public in June. According to the Times, tickets cost eight pounds. So the one thing they can see is you coming. <laughs> <laughs> a final musical clue for you now. God save the Queen. <laughs> the fascist regime. They made you a moron. Potential H bomb. Anybody got any ideas? Other than throwing me out. <laughs> Is it the right of spring by Stravinsky? <laughs> I think that I preferred that to the original. I like your common people. Oh, well, thank you. It's a and, serious and, and fan club up there. <laughs> Are you from what? Canada? Yeah. <laughs> it's all beginning to make sense. When Charlie said, I like your common people, for an awful moment there, I thought that meant you kept slaves. <laughs> well, this is news that three pensioners 
were evicted from a royal themed tea room mm -hmm. for refusing to stand up during the national anthem. Oh, yes. Who owns the tea room? A mad lady. <laughs> it's Anita Atkinson, whose personal views on the monarchy are a little unclear. Mm. <laughs> 3 p.m. every day, the national anthem is played by a musical helium balloon. <laughs> Oh, that's nice and respectful. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything else about the tea room that the ejected pensioners uh, disliked apart from the national? Pensioners, national? that's yeah. a good word. <laughs> that makes them sound more get up and go, yeah, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's sort of, yeah. You could say pensioners, <laughs> but it has such a common sound. So, in, yeah. No, I love it. Uh, and you want pensioners. Yeah, pensioners. Like pioneers. Yeah, pioneers, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. People who go out and get and, and, those and, and, and rest. winter fuel allowances. Yeah, and, <laughs> <laughs> and say one for all and all for... Sorry, but hang on, I've forgotten <laughs> what I'm <can't> saying. <laughs> you people are messed up! <laughs> and I say that coming from a country that brought you the sandwich in a can and a TV channel for dogs. <laughs> The tea room also contains a huge collection of royal memorabilia. Any guesses as to what? Ooh. Surely the Queen has the largest collection of royal memorabilia. Her <laughs> uh, wardrobe? Yes. Is it Princess Margaret? <laughs> They're from the BBC. The toilets in the tea room have been turned into thrones. That's not respectful, is it? No. And there are cardboard cutouts of members of the royal family the model of uh, Kate Middleton was very similar to the real thing, as when she turns sideways, you can't see her. <laughs> <laughs> Time now for the odd one out round. Ready? Joaquin Phoenix, Stains. A boat called Bin Laden One and Tiger Bread. <laughs> Ian and Charlie. Uh, Stains has recently changed its name in order to appear more upmarket. So it's called itself Stains Upon Thames. Yes. It's marginally better than Stains Upon Trousers. <laughs> <laughs> and Tiger Bread, that changed its name because a child wrote to the supermarket, as if children can now decide what foodstuffs are called. Because if, if I was a child, if, if I was written off to a supermarket when I was six years old, I'd have said, can we call Beans Fart Pills? <laughs> um, All right, what about his name? Joaquim. Joaquim Phoenix. He's changed his name. Yes, because I mean, he would be... Because it was something like Leaf or something like that before, because it was River Phoenix, and so the kids had other names like Leaf uh, and Tree. I don't tree. know the rules of this game, so isn't it there for... Oh, well, you know, it's, sort of, it's, it's about... Sort of, although they're opposing team, I sort of feel there's a spirit of humanity that somehow we can reach across and make <laughs> friends. Was well, there any sort of television series <laughs> you ever involved in that gave across that idea that civilization? No, the whole thing <laughs> is competition. You should be at each other's throats. <laughs> We're under attack, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're right, guys. Uh, they've all changed their names apart from Bin Laden Boat, uh, though it, it will be required to because the authorities think it could cause uh, security risk. But it hasn't order. yet. Well, Lawrence Godfrey, who owns the boat, said his son Dylan wanted a silly name, and he heard the name Bin Laden on TV and thought it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> Did they honestly think think that's a security risk, is that... They it? changed its name to the Exploding Death Boat. <laughs> well, Dean Phoenix's family name was changed back in 1978. Would anyone like to hazard a guess as to what Joaquin Phoenix's name was? Derek. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, it was Bottom. Bottom? Re Joaquin... Joaquin Bottom. You can see why you've changed that. <laughs> that's the brother of River Phoenix. So River Phoenix's real name was River Bottom? <laughs> That, that's exactly right. The, uh, if, you, if the, your the family's guy... called Bottom, what you don't call your kid River, do yeah. you? I mean, <laughs> it, the only thing would be, yeah, smelly. Well, yeah. well. <laughs> In one interview, Joaquin Phoenix claimed that he suffers from multiple personality disorder, or as a real actor calls it, rain. <laughs> <laughs> Time now for the Missing Words Round, which this week features as its guest publication, the British Water Tower Appreciation Society. <laughs> I was going to read the whole edition, but I'd already completed one five-year mission. So I... <laughs> and we start with William Hague's What performs what? 
Is it Water Tower performs songs from the shows? <laughs> <laughs> Leader performs badly. <laughs> <laughs> William H. 83 year old father oh, performs yeah. wing walk stunt. See? Look at that. William Haig's father recently clambered onto a flying aircraft, completed long hikes, climbed mountains, and he still can't shake off the bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Will you get away from me, son? Let me die in peace. <laughs> Next, the Sunday Times. Brands water tower enthusiast as what? Left wing subversives. <laughs> Mad. Sad. Sad. <laughs> the enemy within. The Sunday Times brands water tower enthusiasts as anoraks. Yeah, I understand anoraks is a British term for obsessive fans who devote their lives to something they, that doesn't matter. <laughs> well, don't knock that, guys. It pays my pension. <laughs> <laughs> Cleaning lady next forgets to what? Wipe. <laughs> um, clean. That's clean, all. but spelt clean. <laughs> all right, the cleaning lady forgets to attach the nozzle to the vacuum cleaner. This is a story of an unidentified cleaner who became an internet hit because of this video. She's missed a bit there. <laughs> Next. Yes. Britain's rudest what to what? Taught us to harangue the nation. <laughs> Britain's rudest royal to tell nation to stick Jubilee up its ass. <laughs> Britain's rudest shop to shut after 170 years. This is the closure of Palfrey and Kemp, a shop in Lymington, whose owners Terry Palfrey and and Jeff Kemp were uh, described by the Independent as being the rudest in Britain. And soon there'll be a sign on the door that says, fuck off or closed. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought I'd hear Captain Kirk yeah. say that. <laughs> what about T.J. Hooker? <laughs> he was meant to be a policeman. <laughs> Next, New Grimsby Telegraph Scratch and Sniff Edition What? Features Water Tower. <laughs> New Grimsby Telegraph Scratch and Sniff Edition Smells of Bread. <laughs> Readers of Grimsby local papers have been treated to an edition smelling of freshly baked bread. Though I have no idea how in Grimsby you can smell the bread in the newspaper uh, through the overpowering stench of rotting fish. <laughs> What's Grimsby done to you? Well, I compared to Ilfracum, <laughs> very little. <laughs> Next, the day the Queen threw a tantrum and what? Regained India. <laughs> <laughs> the day the Queen threw a tantrum and tipped a pot of ink over her own head. <laughs> but only because she had run out of stamps and so she had to slam her head against the <laughs> Is that the funniest thing you've ever heard? <laughs> Mail this! <laughs> and so the final scores are Ian and Charlie have four. No, no. Ian and Charlie have six. Yeah. It's not important. Right. <laughs> and, <laughs> it's not and accurate. Paul and Andy have seven. Seven? <laughs> We say thank you to our panelists, Ian Hislop and Charlie Brooker, Paul Morton and Andy Hamilton. <laughs> what have I done? Go back. Go back. Should I be Come back, Paul? Where shall I go? Paul Merton. Yeah. Oh, I'm back. No. <laughs> On which note, we say thank you to our panelists, Ian Hislop and Charlie Brooker. <laughs> On which note, we say thank you to our panelists, Ian Hislop and Charlie Brooker, yeah. and Paul Merton and Andy Hamilton. Yeah.
And I leave you with the news that at the uh, uh, G8 summit, the decision on whether Germany should fund the Euro bailout goes to a show of hands. <laughs> Day one of his Australian outback holiday, and it's the same old story for George Michael. <laughs> and at the Institute of Contemporary Dance, rehearsals are underway for its carefully choreographed new work, Clegg and Cameron, The Coalition. Good night. Jermaine Greer, Ross Noble and Jamelia compete to store their pet hates in Room 101 next year on BBC One, whilst a second round of American Dad has just got underway over on BBC Three now. <laughs>